I don't know about that. Well, the thought of never seeing my wife again scares the shit out of me. What's up, Campfire crew? My beautiful, brand new baby daughter is home with me and my wife now, so I'm sorry that I'm not getting out the scariest stories to you as I normally would each and every week, but I hope you enjoy these two. Everybody, thanks for your patience, stick around, much more to come, and being a dad is one of the raddest things I've ever done. This happened about four years ago. Some backstory. I'm from Australia and lived there during this event. At the time, my girlfriend, now wife, lived in another country but was visiting me over Christmas break. I lived in a big city, which, if you drove about an hour in any direction, would either lead you to another city or beautiful nature, in my humble opinion. My friends and I decided to take my girlfriend to see some of this beautiful nature, and decided on a national park about an hour and a half from where we lived. This place is definitely no sort of secret location. It's very well known, but there are a ton of different areas to it, all with different rural and windy roads taking you to the various areas of the park. We'd gone in two different cars, my friends in one, and me and my girlfriend in another, just to have some time together. We finished out the day of hiking and were heading home down one of the less common roads, and I remember seeing this really beat-up old 70s sedan with a wild-looking dude in the driver's seat, and he passed us in the other direction. And this wasn't uncommon, as there are a lot of smaller, less economically sound towns spattered around this area. But for some reason, he and his car stood out, and my girlfriend noticed it as well. About 200 meters further down the very windy road, there was a pull-off area, I mean, just a semicircle of gravel you could pull off to to look at the view towards the ocean. There was a camper van belonging to a company that mostly rented out colorful vans to backpackers parked there, and there was a woman standing in front of it. As soon as she saw us, she jumped out onto the road and flagged us down. Now, I've read enough of these stories to know pulling in to help her on a quiet road might not be the safest idea. But back then, I hadn't, and my friends were in the car directly behind us. Luckily, she wasn't the person I didn't want to meet. She was quite obviously upset and scared when we pulled in. I told my girlfriend to wait in the car, and I got out to speak to her. She was almost in tears. I can't remember where she was from but it was a Central European country from my memory. She was touring around with her four- or five-year-old daughter. She told me her van had broken down, and she'd pulled off here and then called the van's company's assistance line and was waiting for help. By this time, my friends had pulled in behind us, and a couple of them had come over to see what was up. Apparently, a scary man had driven past her a few times already the first time pulling over to offer to take her and her daughter to the nearest town for help. She thanked him and said no, she was waiting for the assistance vehicle. And he left, but then kept driving past every 10 or 15 minutes, always in opposite directions, and slowing down and looking at them before driving off. She begged us to stay with her while she waited for the assistance vehicle because this guy terrified her and her daughter. I agreed. My friends being the awesome people they are decided me and my girlfriend were enough, and they ditched us. Thanks, guys. We stayed with the woman for a little while before the car my girlfriend and I had seen earlier drove past kind of slow, coming the opposite way we'd seen him the first time. As soon as he'd driven around the bend, the lady told us that that was the scary man that she'd been seeing before we got there. This got my girlfriend and I to take her much more seriously after the feeling we got from the guy just seeing him on the road. A few minutes later, he came back from the other direction and pulled into the parking area. Some more context. I'm not an intimidating man. I'm tall, but I have almost zero muscle and fairly soft features, so there's nothing at all intimidating about me. A terrified foreign woman 
her tiny daughter, my girlfriend, who doesn't look that intimidating but is tough as nails, were all parked off a quiet road in a rural location with a not-so-nice-looking dude pulling in to where we are. Great. He gets out, and he's redneck as hell and definitely not friendly-looking. No judgment on the redneck part. I mean, I come from a poorer country town north of our city, and those are my people, but hopefully you get the picture. He strolls over to us, and at this point, I walk towards him to put himself between my girls and him. He strolls over to us, and at this point, I walk towards him to put myself between the girls and him. I mean, I have no idea where this bravery came from. I would definitely not describe myself as a brave person. He looked at the girls, and then at me, and asked if he could help. I told him, no, we're just waiting for the assistance vehicle, and we told him we've got it covered. He then says maybe he could stay and wait with the woman and her daughter, so we didn't have to. I told him that we were happy to stay and thanked him, but again, we've got it covered. He kind of just stood there for a while staring at us. Not really saying anything, but just giving off mega creepy vibes. After what seemed like forever, another car drove past us and looked out, but kept going. And this seemed to startle him. He mumbled good luck, got in his car, and drove off. We waited with this poor, scared woman and her daughter for almost 90 minutes. We ended up talking a lot, and hopefully we had made her opinions of Australians a little bit brighter after Mega Creep who again drove past once more about 15 minutes after he'd left us. Finally, the assistance vehicle arrived, a bigger dude who could definitely handle himself, and I asked to see his ID and stuff to be safe, but he was in a car marked by the company, and he had all his tools, and he definitely seemed legit. I gave the lady my number and asked her to text me when she was off safe. She was so grateful that we stayed with her for such a long time, And it made me feel good that even if this dude was just a weird-looking, awkward country guy that didn't mean any harm and was really just trying to help, we had still made her feel more comfortable in a strange country. I don't think he was, and I definitely believe he was up to no good, but hey, you never know. I did get a message from her to say that she was safe, so everything ended well. But creepy mountain dude? Let's not meet again. My parents imported and exported antiques and fine wines for many years, and now it's just antiques. My mother Natasha is Russian-born but grew up in the U.S. from the age of three, and always had the love of anything old and unusual when it came to furniture and artwork, something that seems to have rubbed off on me a little. My parents would regularly go to auctions and estate sales and the like to purchase interesting pieces for their business. It was rare that anything purchased at these sales ever made it to home to become part of our house unless it was out of the ordinary, or my parents liked it so much they couldn't part with it. My childhood home looked like a cross between a madman's idea of a yard sale and an antiques market belonging to an insane hoarder. But it made for good fun and interesting conversation, and many, many a good fort. None of the furniture or artwork previous had bothered me as far as I can remember until my mother purchased a painting by an unknown artist. It wasn't signed, and research has never uncovered who painted it or who the subject actually was. All we knew was that the family who put it in the auction bought the home they had found it in and didn't like the painting or several other pieces of furniture that the last owners had left behind. So, off to the sales they went. It was a rather large lot of over 50 items. My mother purchased the painting and a sideboard full of silverware and plates of varying ages locked inside. We got them open after we got it home, and it was strange as my mother had been told it was empty. (laughs) Not so much as it turned out. The painting was a woman about 30 years old, maybe older, but it's a painting so it's hard to tell. She was wearing a long blue-gray gown standing in a veranda of an old house and next to her was a table with a tea set and kettle and what looked like some kind of cake or sandwiches on a plate. There were some flowers in a chair and part of a window, and whoever did the painting had a lot of talent as the detail was incredible. 
we figured it was probably painted around 1900 or 1910, judging by the fashions the woman was wearing. My mother brought it home and we hung it in the hallway next to my parents' bedroom between the main bathroom and a little room my dad used to do his paperwork in. I felt very strange around the painting from that first day after it was hanging up. The hallway in summer was comfortable and not too warm, but after the painting was hung up, the area around it turned almost ice cold. I mean, when you'd pass the painting, you'd get goosebumps on whatever exposed skin was pointing towards the painting. I also started feeling like the lady in the painting was watching us. My twin sisters started saying that they didn't like looking at the painting as it made them feel uncomfortable and like they weren't meant to be around it. My baby brother would walk on the other side of the hallway from it, and when asked why, he said that he didn't like the lady, and that he was cold, and when he looked at her, he felt like she was looking back at him. So it went past just feelings in the hallway. At night, we started hearing whispers that hadn't been there previous. I mean, our house has always had its share of spooky behavior, and we'd gotten used to it. But this was new. We started seeing movements of flashes of blue-gray, like the dress in the painting, and it was always out of the corner of your eye. A strange touch occasionally in the hallway when no one else was around. And this may sound like something from Tales from the Crypt, but I assure you, this isn't something I saw on TV. Although I wish sometimes it was. My father, who was 6'5 and 350 pounds, got a cold hand run up his back when he was in the shower. He was so used to other things in the house, at first we thought it was just another spirit making itself known to us as it was new here. But then things got bad. Fast. My baby brother, and let's call him Adam, was tripped on the stairs and was pushed by a cold hand when he tried to get up. A big fern we had in the hall next to the painting suddenly started dying. It was over 20 years old and had no previous problems. And when moved away from the painting, it went back to being a healthy plant. It's still alive today, but one side of it looks a little mangled. The side that was facing the painting was never the same. The branches grew back weird like something had infected them. And it was checked out and tested by some plant specialists in my town but they couldn't find anything wrong with it. Our dogs, Frankie and Dex, both terrier mixes, wouldn't go past the painting without whining or growling at it. They're normally very placid and gentle dogs, and our aunt's dog, Lula, a poodle, had to be carried past it when we used to babysit her. She would not walk past it or even look at it. Our cats tried to claw it at one time when it fell off its hook onto the ground. Our normally placid Maine Coon Cat, Sally and Meg, both went nuts trying to scratch it until we took it away. Then, it started coming off its hook every night and then just sit against the wall upright every morning when no one had touched it. My mother, who was a very spiritual person who put up with our friendly spirits in the house with a grain of salt as they didn't bother her, finally decided that this painting had to go. Something was wrong with it. And we all agreed. So off to the auction it went. Several times. My mother knew the buyers who first bought it, and they only kept it a month. They too heard whispers, and their cat also attacked the painting. And she gave it to a neighbor who liked it. That neighbor sold it after her dog freaked out around it. It continued to get sold or auctioned or given away until 2014, when a man who collected art in Florida bought the painting and didn't know of its history. Having again tried to research its past, he only found it was possibly a painting of an artist's wife who died young. I don't know if that's true or not. There is no real record of this artwork anywhere. And again, it's not signed. The man who owned it last, I heard, keeps it in his basement, as it frightened his grandchildren. And he says he won't sell it and keeps it locked up. I think he too knows something isn't right with it, but I'm still worried about it as he's an older guy and we all wonder what's going to happen to it when he dies. I don't think the painting's safe. Is it possible there is a ghost or a spirit attached to it? It just doesn't seem friendly. Any one of you who see this painting let me know. I think it really should be destroyed. <laughs> 